Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Better Than Starting Manned. We are back with Contractual Obligations 2, uh, revised thanks to some excellent suggestions in the previous video. And so we, it turns out, this thing can be tested as soon as I enter the moon's SOI because I'll be on an escape trajectory before I put myself in orbit, so I don't need all that extra crap that I put together for that complicated... Uh, the complicated thing is not necessary, long story short. So as a result, it's under 90 tons, so I'm using a completely unmodified 90 ton lifter to save on a few dollars, primarily because the main sails cost 5,600 each, whereas the keel hulls, oh, they cost the same. Never mind. The one that actually needed to be replaced was, I believe, this one right here, because I think that's not a... If that's not a skipper, I should make sure it's a skipper, because that's the mid-launch one, and it's also a lot cheaper. Okay, so mission profile, pretty straightforward. Launch this thing into orbit, uh, deliver the large payload, deorbit this me mess. Well, okay. Deorbit this, deliver the large payload, boost this rest of this to the moon, test this little thing up at the top, put the rest of this in orbit, and job's done. So let's uh, get this party started once again. And yes, I did check the, uh, I triple checked the um, staging, so we should be okay on that front. Now, there's no real specific reason why I'm using the, not changing this out, other than I know exactly that this that this launcher works for the weight that I've got. It's worked before, it'll work again. That's really all there is to it. You might also notice that I did restructure it so that the uh, heavier uh, dead weight is at the bottom instead of the top. Okay, launching in three, two, one. Here we go. Unmodified, unadulterated. Probably gonna have to de accelerate just a little to account for that heat problem we have with these engines, which is the only downside to using this booster. There we go. That should stabilize it. Not quite. Just a little more. There we go. I think we're uh, stable on the heat front now. So put those numbers up because they're always nice to see. A nighttime launch, always a little bit interesting. All right. So there's still no really good way I can think of to get this middle stage back to the ground intact other than what I'm doing. There's no way to put heat shields on it or anything useful like that, so it really just comes down to using it as carefully as I can. Those. Away they go. Excellent. Still gaining speed? Perfect. Okay. Awesome. We'll begin our gravity turn here in just a moment. Now let's hope this thing doesn't start shimmying on us, because the last time it sure did. Nope, all good. All kinds of good. Excellent. Okay, so um, I had a really good suggestion regarding future plans for this series. We are going to stick with one point with this version of the game. We're not going to go to 1.0. As much as I would love to play the current version, I'm honestly more interested in pushing this series a little further. Full throttle to those engines. RCS on. Perfect. So we are going to devote all of our resources going forward towards putting, getting a Kerbal to the surface of Duna and back again. That is my end game for this series. And I was thinking about it on my drive home from work today, and we are going to design a Hermes-style spacecraft. For those of you who don't get the reference, um, 
there's a novel, it was a superb novel called The Martian. Uh, highly recommended. It's by Andy Weir. Um, it's going to be actually a movie of it coming out this fall. It's a superb story about a mission to Mars. I uh, don't want to give anything else away. I'm sure if you really want spoilers, you should look, look up a far better summary. But for the mission, mission to Mars, one of the most important components of it is the um, uh, Hermes spacecraft, which is a orbital, never leaves orbit, interplanetary shuttle, basically. So it shuttles people back and forth from Mars to Earth. And, um, is there something wrong? What the heck's going on here? Why are we just barely... Something is Something's wrong, isn't it? Something, something's wrong. I just noticed that we are, our apoapsis is just barely... That does not feel right. Hmm. Weird. Um, well, if this keeps going the way it is, what the heck? Really? Okay, either... What the... What the... What the devil? Um... Seriously? Okay, that, 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 that was, um, that's weird. That shouldn't have had any issue making it into orbit. Okay, what the heck? 88 tons. Get rid of this piece of junk. Okay, go grab my 80 ton launcher again, or my 90 ton Okay, subassemblies, 90 ton lifter. That's this one right here. Isn't that the one I was using? Yeah, it was. Oh, that is really weird. I haven't even changed versions. Okay, there's that. I suppose it could have been the engine I put on here, but that doesn't really make a lot of sense. All right, unadulterated, unmodified, unchanged. Is everything else still where it belongs? Nope, of course it isn't. Why would it be accurate after all that, right? That engine fires separately. It also fires separately from that decoupler, which fires separately from those parachutes. Not that they're on the same parts of the ship, but that'll make sure I really don't fire off the test structure at the wrong time. Okay, but seriously guys, that didn't make any sense at all. I mean, this ship has gotten 90 ton payloads into orbit before, without incident, without issue. Why would it not work properly that time? All right, let's just hope it was just a uh, visit with the Kraken, um, or I completely bollocked something. Maybe I fired that in. Did I forget to fire an engine? Maybe I messed up the staging for that middle engine. That actually could be what happened. I didn't actually look, think to look to see if that middle engine was firing properly or if I moved it to the wrong stage. Let's just check it. That would actually explain it. Um, if that middle engine didn't fire, it wouldn't have the guts to get to the... Uh, get the rest of the way. Okay, let's just make sure. Alright, well this time it's right. They are all going to fire. Um, yeah, that middle engine. Alright, let's just give it a shot again. A little less power right there. Stabilize and launch. Okay. Anyways, um, the Hermes, so what we're going to do is I'm going to design I have sort of a vague plan in mind. I'm going to design and assemble a interplanetary shuttle designed to sh basically travel back and forth between Kerbin and other planets, mostly Eve and Duna, without any without anything other than resupply. So it just has to be refueled, and uh, so there'll be refueling shuttles. 
So it'll be refueled in orbit. Um, there will be a new um, landing component uh, delivered because the landing component's going to be... Well, I still haven't figured out all those details yet, but the short of it is that it's going to... Um, the bulk of it is going to travel the whole trip there and back again, which is going to be a little expensive on fuel, but I think in the long run, only having to refuel it will be far more entertaining if I wanted to continue the series after that first Mars mission. But it's also just a design challenge. I want to design something that is realistic, because NASA would not throw away a massive interstellar ship like that if they had the choice. Um, so we're going to need the... In terms of science, we're going to need a lot more science, because we definitely need the Capola module. That's uh, a given. Uh, for life support. I think we're also going to need the batteries so that I don't have to worry about figuring out how to reorient my um, uh, solar panels. Also, it will save me from the irritation of having... So I won't have to reorient. It'll also provide consistent power all the time, whereas the solar panels produce a lot less out towards Duna and a lot more in towards uh, uh, EVE. So if I wanted this to be a uh, multi-purpose ship that could do Venus and, uh, or sorry, Eve and Duna, that would be the way I'd want to do it. All right. Please hope this will work a lot better this time. Okay. There's our line. Okay. We're going up a lot faster this time. The only issue I can see is that we are going to overheat that central engine. We are gaining speed. I don't know, we just... I don't know, it's, it's, something just doesn't feel right with the way this ship is flying. Yeah, we're at a 37... Okay, well, we've passed 38 already, um, which is infinitely better than our last ship flew, our last attempt. It must have been that central engine failing. I must have, I must have failed to activate it because we're already at 42 now. And last time around, we were still stuck around 38 uh, when we were almost out of fuel. So, yeah, that's looking much, much better. So we'll do a bit more of a gravity turn here, get a little more periaps work done. As we come up to 50 and continue rising. Just keep it on that... Uh, Prograde marker for a bit. <sighs> I might have jumped the gun just a little on that, but full throttle the engines. And there goes that central engine. It's done. Okay. We're up to 60. Just keep it at the current angle. might have jumped the gun on that just a little bit, but we still should have enough fuel left because we're pushing that, pulling that periaps up quite a bit. And we're shooting for about 74 apoaps. Okay. I think we're doing the... I think, I think this is going right. It feels wrong, but I think it's going to do okay. Look at that periapsis rise. Seventy-two. All right. The only downside to this design is that we are not. Ugh, it's tight. It's going to be tight. get us into the... there we are, we're into full orbit. I'm going to get us down to about 20 seconds left and full throttle the engine. All the energy into that periapsis, including some RCS. Did I disable this tank? I did. Good. Oh, 
Oh my god, really? No, I bollocksed it again. What in the world, guys? I am having a heck of a time with these flights today. <sighs> I guess the 45 degree approach is probably better. I think I did overdo the uh, gravity turn, but let's get these, uh, since they cost the same, let's just get these mainsail engines. Same thrust, but they can go at full throttle a little longer. Hold on, did I not get one in the middle? I did not. Come on, zoom in. Closer, closer, closer. There we go. It's more like it. Okay. And then we're going to do the same with the uh, skipper engine. We'll get the uh, skipper. It's got a lot less thrust, but it's designed for working in these conditions. All I have to do is make sure that it's in the right stage. Oh, yeah, okay, look, look, things have gone all goofball on us. Look at all that. Look at that joke. Why on earth would that happen? I don't know. Okay, six and one. Six and seven, okay, good. And then the eight of those, and then, yeah, there's our problem. That jumped up into that stage for no apparent reason. Good, okay. Round three. And we're only going to go to a 45 degree um, gravity turn, no more, because the other one seems to be causing us some grief. Better safe than sorry, right guys? One of the really cool things about this Hermes plan is I can start designing and building this thing now, even though I don't have all the technology I'm going to need for it. I can get a big chunk of it into orbit anytime I want. All right, round three, or, well, only if you don't include the last episode. Here we go, whoa! Okay, we are, we have a little more punch off the uh, start there because of our, uh, hopefully because of our slightly better engines. I do believe the Rocco Max, or yeah, the mainsails are a little more fuel efficient than the, uh, their counterparts, their tier below counterparts. So actually, probably this was a good decision. That's what I'm going to tell myself. That sure seemed to bunch off the uh, start a lot faster this time. Okay. Here we go. going a lot faster this time. Wait, where'd our fins go? Did my fins... They broke off. Well, it's a good thing I've got the bloody uh, thrust vectoring or I'd be in real trouble here. Did those get ripped off by the... Did I accidentally take them off or did they get ripped off by the... Uh, rip loss of our uh, booster rockets? I can't even tell. Okay. So far, so good. Okay, apoapsis appears to be rising nicely. 45 degrees is our angle. There's 37. There's 40. Okay. I sure hope you guys can't hear the dishwasher running upstairs. It seems awfully loud today. 45. I'll give it another 5 degrees. There we go. 50. Mm 
do another gravity turnaround as we approach 60. A little slower this time. There we go. Okay, at 60 we'll finish the turn to about 60 degrees, get ourselves into actual orbit. Put a lot more up this time. Get ourselves to the 74 kilometer target. There we go. All right. RCS on. Lots of RCS left in that tank, which is good. That should be more than enough to get this rest of this ship to the moon. It's a shame I didn't bring myself a. Uh, Stabilizer. Okay. Just a little further and we're going to do our orbital burn. And this time we are going to have success. And we should have time to bring the uh, lower stage home as well. We'll do it at T minus 25, full throttle. There we go. good. Come on. Do it, do it, do it. We are right on the apoapsis. This is the kind to put us right on that prograde marker. Okay, we've just passed the apoapse. Come on. Come on. We lost the outer engine. Come on, just a little further. Just a little more. Oh my god, really? No, 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 no. Oh, for frack's sakes, what the hell? What is going on with this thing? I mean, seriously. This ship should be able to get 90 tons of payload into orbit without incident. Am I just I must just be screwing up my flight, but I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. <sighs> I'm too tired of this to try and figure out what I'm doing wrong, so we're just gonna just blow a bit more of our budget. Increase the cost of the ship a little, which is unfortunate. Because it means our return on this will be a lot lower than I'd planned. But it's a lot higher than it would be if we could never get this thing into orbit. All right, it's off by just a little on that one. That looks good. That one looks good. Okay, let's get ourselves some struts. I mean, I, I seriously do not understand why this thing is doing what it's doing. I that That design never has failed me, to the best of my knowledge, unless I'm completely misremembering how well that thing does or does not work. In which case, I apologize for my uh, poor memory. Okay. And then we'll just put one right here as well. Okay. Now those should all be in the lowest stage. Perfect. Everything else is staged properly. Okay. <sighs> Round four. <clears throat> that was so bizarre. I don't know. I must just be uh, out of out of practice at flying these smaller ships or something, or that, or I'm trying to fly something that actually had a built-in design flaw that I corrected and didn't ever correct the. Um, I might not have ever corrected the design for that 90-ton lifter. I'm sure this is completely over now, but all right. I think this is probably grossly overpowered now, but that's just an expression of my aggravation that I'm having so much trouble getting the full thing into orbit. Let's just hope it doesn't get me going so fast that I actually have atmospheric heating issues. That would be
would be really funny if this thing actually burned up on launch. But holy crap, are we going fast. Also, these engines are lasting a lot longer. We are actually going to be into our gravity turn before we get rid of those engines. I think, or we'll just be reaching it. Nope, we're going to definitely be gravity turning. Here we go. Holy smokes, I'm having just a little trouble controlling this thing. Alright, don't break anything. Good. Whoa, 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 whoa. I was just feeling just a little unsteady there. Alright, well, that was a grossly overpowered stage. <sighs> that got us going... I mean, we already have a 50-kilometer apoapsis going on here, so... Yeah, that's not going to be... Getting into orbit is not an issue now. Let's just say. So we kind of blew that to kingdom come. With those uh, boosters. That, that was completely, grossly overpowered. But that that is probably a measure of my frustration at that, that uh, 90 ton launch. Last time I've ever used in that design. That was annoying. There's our satellite parking orbit. So, when in doubt, dial up the power to 11. And away you go. Okay. And wait until we're actually in orbit, and we'll start the burn at T minus 40... 35, 40 seconds. after we are in actual orbit. All right, here we go. Put most of it into our, into our periaps if we can. Should not have any issues with this. Grade marker. I'm on full throttle. Apparently, I didn't start my burn soon enough again. Well, let's hope I can get high enough. And regardless of how things turned out here. Okay. Faster, faster, faster. That periaps needs to be at least positive. And, you know, high enough that it's not going to you know, completely screw everything up. Okay, apoaps, stop going up. Stop rising apoaps, this, this is not good. Oh my god. Really? I can't slow down the apoaps rise. No! Stupid elliptical orbits. Damn it. Okay. No, that's still not high enough on the periaps either. Alright, well. We're just going to have to see what happens as we go down through the atmosphere and see if we can... Hopefully the apoaps will stay high enough in spite of our atmospheric drag from our botched launch. Wow, this has just gone all kinds of wrong today. I just hope we're not going low enough that we're going to have to contend with uh, atmospheric uh, drag, like burning or anything like that. 
I also hope that 212 kilometers is enough that we're going to be able to fly back into orbit again. Our warp speed is 4. We've just bottomed out. We're just about to bottom out our periaps. Definitely going to lose some apoaps. Oh my word. I just had to start that burn sooner, that's all. But, I mean, wow. Not my finest hour as far as uh, orbital planning goes. Not my finest hour. Hmm. Alright, well, we're going back up again at least. That apoapsis is a long ways away, and these satellites are, these payloads are going to be obvious. This payload is going to be in a terrible orbit, but. Oh well. We're just going to have to um, deal with the consequences of our errors. Hopefully, raise up that periaps just a little. Of course, this is going to completely bugger my ability to return this uh, lower stage payload. I don't even know how I would pull that off. I guess I'll let it drift back into the... I don't know. I really don't know. Okay, here we go. Just gonna go up nice and high. Nine, eight, seven. Okay, SAS off, RCS on. Let's give it a nice swing around. Oh well, this is going to be the eccentric satellite, apparently. The way today's uh, mission has gone, I'm just going to live with the consequences of having a large payload bombing around up there. Fortunately, I did put a D... Did I put a docking port on it? Yes, I did. So I will be able to come back and get that in the future if things are really not ideal. But oh, it's definitely going to be a navigational hazard, to say the least. Alright. Come on, keep going. Go on, keep going. I'm thinking I might just leave this whole mess attached to it for this one. Maybe I can adjust it again and... No, there's no reason to do that. It'll just make my life more difficult in the future. Not easier. Alright, let's get as close to that uh, apoapsis as possible. Wow, really? Oh, we are going to run out of RCS, aren't we? Gorama. Okay, all this has to be is an orbit. It doesn't even have to be a good orbit, it just has to be in orbit. Heck, I'd almost get away with it not being in orbit. There we go. It's in orbit. RCS off. Transfer a couple of bits of RCS here. Hopefully that's going to be enough to do the moon part of this. And let's get the uh, extra part of the ship out of here. Alright, do a complete rotation. And we will do a deorbiting burn on this and I don't know. We'll we'll have to see what happens. It's honestly I might just not waste my time on this because I think it's just going to uh, burn up at best. Uh, I mean it's not configured for uh, dead man deployment, so it has to survive the run through the atmosphere. Alright, there we are. Well, one way or another this thing's coming down. It's probably coming down like a ton of, ruddy, of uh, bloody bricks. 
So let's see what happens as we hit the atmosphere here. Okay, let's just... RCS on. There we go. Well, we'll see what happens as we come back down into the atmosphere. Try and get ourselves stabilized on that retro marker. There we go, almost there. Okay, that should do for this. All right, let's see what happens as we come down into the atmosphere at uh, prodigious speed here. I have no illusions about what kind of shape this thing's going to be in as it hits the ground. Because we are coming in really hot and really high. Alright, here we go. Okay, so we're ready to pulse the last of our juice out of the uh, engines. As soon as we start getting an actual overheat warning on this. We're not going to have much longer with the RCS thrusters. Let's use them up. Okay. Come on. Are we cooling down? I think we passed the... Okay. Come on. Okay, there goes some of the uh, less survivable stuff. Entries are just iffy at best. So, well, let's get our delivery done. I suppose that's not the worst elliptical orbit I've ever put a ship into, but. Alright. Go to the Space Center. Alright, so in the next episode, we will finish up Contractual Obligations 2 and try and figure out what we're going to do about getting enough science to do a manned mission to Duna. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.